Jeremiah chapter 14. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the dearth. Dearth is you take off the D, you get earth. You take off the R, you get death. Death in the earth. Judah mourning. And the gates, therefore, language. The city gates. They are black unto the ground. They've been burnt. In some places in Jeremiah, it's not in order. They've been burned. And the cry of Jerusalem has gone up. And God said, I'm not listening. And their nobles, have they set their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. That's the dirt. And they were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Lamentation. No water to drink. You know, the world gets it too easy today with going to the store and getting bottled water. Maybe they're coming a time, the Bible says, in the tribulation period for sure. One third of war is going to turn to blood. There will be no rain. Not going to be so easy to get water in the tribulation. Especially with Moses hanging around doing his wonders. Because the ground is chapped, no rain, dried up. For there was no rain in the earth. Plowmen were ashamed. They had nothing to do. They had no work to do. No reason. Crops will die. They covered their heads. Again, it's, it's misery, pain, lamentation, woe. Yea, the hind also clay played in the field and forsook it. They gave birth. And the mother beast realized, you know what? Let the, let, let the animal die. There's nothing I can do. There's no food. And it's funny when nature starts realizing. <laughs> out of luck. And the thing is, you got to question yourself. What did the animals do? And man in his sin. What did the Passover lamb of all the Passover lambs that were slain, what did they do? And there were ox and goats and sheep brought for the slaughter at the temple. And what did they do? What did Jesus Christ do to have to suffer and die for us? And listen, the animal activists have a point. Well, you know, the animals didn't do nothing. That's right. And neither did Jesus Christ. The wild asses just stand in those high places. That's where the, the worship was. That's where the false worship. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail. Because there was no grass. Death. Lo, though our iniquity testify against us, do that, do thou it for my name's sake, for our backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee. They're repenting to. All right, we're in trials and tribulation. We get troubles, and yet one entire book called Judges. We're in trouble, Lord God, help us. God sends help. Things get good for a while. And then they go right back into the sin. The hope of Israel. The Savior thereof in time of trouble. Notice how that trouble is referenced to Israel. Jacob's trouble. Why shouldst thou be a stranger in the land? As a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for the night. God, why are you so strange to us? Your sins. Why shall thou be as a man astonished 
as a mighty man that cannot save. They're question they repented to God and then they're questioning God, why ain't you doing something? Isn't that why he sent Isaiah? Isn't that why he sent Jeremiah? Yet thou, O Lord, are in the midst of us. We are called by thy name. Leave us not. He's gone. So you see the condition of Judah is they don't even know. And the, the preacher, the prophet, has been preaching. Isaiah has been preaching. And they're not listening. They didn't listen. And now it's come upon them. They have no idea. Thus saith the Lord unto his people. That would be the Jews. His people. God's still speaking. Even in his anger, in his judgment, he's still speaking. Thus have you loved to wander away from God. They have not refrained their feet. Going the wrong way. Backsliding. Turning away from God. Therefore the Lord does not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. That's why God's away. That's why God's there. That's not there. That's why God's not helping them. That's why there's drought. And when God leaves you to be in your sins. That's why a man goes to hell. He goes to hell because he has not trusted God to deliver and to cleanse him from his sins. Then said the Lord unto me, Jeremiah, pray not for this people for their good. That's three times God told Jeremiah, don't you pray. Don't you pray. Don't you pray. When they fast, I will not hear their cry. We're going to fast. We're going to pray for the seriousness of the needs that we have. God said, I ain't listening. And there have probably been churches serious. We're going to have a prayer and fast. That church has been so fouled in sin and the world and the devil. God's like, I ain't listening. I don't care. When they offer burnt offerings and oblation, Old Testament, I will not accept them. Imagine those animals dying at the altar. God, oh well. I mean, they're bringing the animals. And as soon as they bring it, they go right back in their sin. And that's a lot of religious besides Baptists. I mean, the Catholics do it. The Presbyterian, they go to the, the, the service. And they put service for God. And many, I mean, they're not even an hour outside the church doors. And they're in what they're doing, whatever kind of foolishness they're in. Whatever sins. But I showed up to church. God's like, I don't care. You know, there are people that go to church today. There are people professing to be Christian that show up on Sunday morning. Maybe Sunday night. And maybe the midweek service. And it, God says, I, I don't care. Because I see what you do Sunday afternoon. I see what you do Monday. I see you Tuesday. I see you Wednesday during the day. I see you Thursday. I see you Friday. I see you Saturday. And when I see you in church, you are nothing but a hypocrite. And you're lying to the congregation, the pastor and the deacons and the other Christians to think you're somebody pretending to be who you're not. And you can put what, and see that's the danger of, of you know, Tithing. You know, you give the Lord 10% and blah, 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 blah. You can give the Lord 400% of your paycheck. 
And if you're not serving the Lord right and you don't have the right heart, and you're not trying to do right, keep your money. God don't want it and God ain't accounting it to you. Those Pharisees and scribes were throwing money like crazy in the offering. And Jesus said, that little widow woman that gave all from her heart. You know, I'm surprised some of the churches today, they don't use that as a message. Instead of Malachi. You know, that little girl, she really loved the Lord. If you give all, they know the congregation ain't that stupid. But I will consume them by sword, war, by famine, it's already happening, and by pestilence. And that's diseases, troubles, problems. We just gone through a pestilence called COVID-19. Famine may be next and war may be next. Then said I, Jeremiah, Oh, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, You shall not see sword, neither shall you see famine. But I will give you assured peace in this place. Jeremiah says, God, what you're telling me to say, and what the prophets are saying, they don't agree. I had a pastor like that. What the Bible says did not agree with what he said. I was in a church one time. He's reading on John chapter 14, and he didn't say mansion. I better forget what he said. Oh, you're not agreeing with what God said. There was another preacher. I, I, I found this thing on, on YouTube. And I, I, you know what? I'm going to listen to this guy. And, you know, and he, come on, not even two minutes. You know, Jesus on Good Friday. Oh, you're off. That's not what the Bible says. Bye. I guarantee Joe Olstein doesn't say what God says. I'm sure Joyce Myers doesn't say what God says. There are many pastors and teachers and evangelists in today's world and in the past and still to come. They are going to say something that God did not say. And they're doing it to, pee, to please the people. They're going to give them itchy ears. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesied lies in my name. The father of lies is the devil. 2 Corinthians 11 says that Satan has his ministers. And they're in the churches today. There are lying prophets in Jeremiah's time, and there are lying preachers in our day today, in the Lazarusine church age. They lie to you. And God will profess to their face, either judgment, you lied in my name. He says, lies in my name. Well, that's a violation. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Thus saith the Lord, and the Lord didn't say it. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them. Neither spake I to them. They prophesied unto you a false Vision, divination, a thing of naught, zero, zip, and deceit of the heart. There are preachers and pastors and priests and lie-bys all like that today. It's false. It's wrong. It's a lie. And nobody challenges it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets, that prophesied my name. And I sent them not. So there are men and women out there. They teach and they preach. And there is no inspiration. And there is no authority of God. Don't be my, oh, what's this religion over that religion? They're liars. Well, how do you know? Study your Bible. That you be not ashamed. We read the word already. They were ashamed. 
Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in the land. Now listen, peace, 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 peace. By sword and by famine those shall those prophets be consumed. All right. I'll give you what I said. What I said, there'll be sword, there'll be uh, famines, and I'll, I'll do it to you. So when those prophets die by sword, by famine, by pestilence, you're going to look at their dead bodies. I thought you said there was going to be no Lord. I thought you said there going to be no pestilence. I thought you said there going to be no famine, dead prophet. But you know what? The people are still not going to change. The people are still not going to get right. People don't want the truth. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them. There will be dead bodies everywhere. Imagine the flies are going to come. Imagine what the smell. You know what the vision is going to be of bodies decaying and rotting. And then the dogs and the birds eating and the wild animals. Them, their wives, their sons, and their daughters. And I will pour out wickedness upon them. And God is not at fault because God sent men to go to them and tell them they're wrong and to do right. Therefore, thou shalt say this word unto them. Let my eyes run down with tears night and day. And let them not cease. For the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach. Breaches a hole with a, a, a broken wall. It's, you know, if you ever see a fence, part of it's knocked down, part of it's got a hole in it, part of it's broken. <coughs> That's a breach. With various grievous blow. If I go forth into the field, then behold the slain of the sword. And if I enter into the city, then behold them that are sick with famine. Yea, both the prophet, who can prophesy, folks, and the priests go about into the land that they know not, Babylon. So there's war, there's famine, and there is captivity. By the way, if you, if, keep your finger there. If you go to Jeremiah chapter 1. Verse uh, 1. In the words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, the priest. Jeremiah is of Aaron. His father was of the priest. Now, not his father, but there was a high priest called Hilkiah. That's not Jeremiah's father. Jeremiah is an Aaron priest. The priest. So when we see the priest, you're looking at a near kinship of Jeremiah. The men he probably knows. And that when he is at the gate of the temple before street preaching, I guarantee 95% of the priests inside walking around in the temple and walking through that gate and walking around the city of, of Jerusalem on the street, 95 is not 99% of those priests know exactly who Jeremiah is. And Jeremiah, the prophet of God, the priest of God, is telling them priests they're not doing it right. Oh, you got envy? You know, I, I have sat before preachers with an open Bible, and I, I have spoken to them about, you know, I don't think what you're doing is right. 
I had, I'll tell you one instance where I was wrong. Okay? I'm not right all the time. I went to a pastor one time, and he would say, you know, Christ died on the tree. Christ died on the tree. And I was just newly saved. I was just starting to read the Bible. I said, what do you mean he died on the tree? He died on Calvary. You know that pastor never took me inside and opened up the Bible and showed me where it said tree? Now, it took me a little while before I got to the Gospels in the book of Acts. But, okay, there's the tree. How come I've had two different pastors in my lifetime when it comes to the Bible? They, they, they don't open the Bible and show me that first time I was wrong. The second time I had with the, well, the last time I had with the pastor, I was right. Why are they afraid to open the Bible? Jeremiah is going to the people he knows with. He's going with the people he's worked with. He's going with the people that his father knows. He's going with the people that knows his family. You're wrong and God's angry with you. Don't you tell me. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. By the way, that was probably that was written this before this time. That's the character of Jeremiah. Listen, Jesus said a prophet has no honor in his own hometown. Why? Because they know who you are, they know what you've done. That's why a lot of times people who, who want to do right and do right, it's why God moves them elsewhere. When I, when I tell somebody I, I, I'll get involved with, listen, I, I'm going to Florida. I'm moving out of New London County. I'm moving out of Connecticut. Listen, I've done all I can. I've, I've served my Jerusalem. But they're not listening. And many of them know who I am. My own family, they know who I am. My Catholic family got highly offended when I began witnessing the true biblical Jesus Christ. That's where Jeremiah is. Priest. Verse 19 of Jeremiah. Has thou utterly rejected Judah? We know the answer is no. No, he didn't. We know that there's 144,000 and only two tribes are not mentioned. Dan and Ephraim. But later on, there are Dan and Ephraim has the, the, the walls or the gates in New Jerusalem. Has thy soul loathed Zion? No, we know Jesus Christ is coming back and is set up and David thrown in Zion. Why hast thou smitten us? Gee, I wonder why. Why didn't you listen to Jeremiah? Why didn't you listen to Isaiah? And there'll be Christians at the judgment seat of Christ. How come I didn't get nothing? Well, my pastor didn't tell me. Did you have a King James Bible? Yeah. Did you read it? Well, I read my daily Psalms. Did you read your Bible? Well, no. I let the pastor for 45 minutes every week teach me all the Bible I need to know. And you're wondering why you don't have no crowns, you have no reward, you have no gold, no, you probably don't even know about the judgment seat of Christ. Bible says, study and show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be shamed, rightly divine the word of truth. There are Christians today, why is all this going on? Why is this turmoil? Because your pastor, your teacher has been lying to you like the false prophet saying, peace, peace, everything's so great. And God's saying, sin, 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 repent, repent, repent. Oh, we don't need to repent. Well, God hates the sin, loves the sinner. You realize, I, I, I look at the headlines in the news. You realize last week, there was an industrial explosion somewhere. You realize I just I picked up the headlines today. There is another industrial building that's caught on fire, and they are now evacuating the area. You realize we're getting industrial explosions and fires now. Have you been warned to check who the new prime minister of Israel is? You know we have a new prime minister in in Israel. Not, I can never say that. Not how to do. 
sorry mispronouncing his name. You know what? I checked the new guy. I, I don't have his name, but I checked it. You know what? I checked his new name. I wanted to see his characteristics. I wanted to see his family tree. I wanted to see if he would be in line to be the next Lady Price. I mean, I'm looking for a Syrian Jew. Well, you know, President Obama's going to be the Antichrist. You know, President Biden's going to be the Antichrist. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, that guy with the bird droppings on his head from Russia. You know, he's going to be the Antichrist. They weren't Jewish, and they weren't Syrian. They wouldn't fit. Don't need to worry. You do pay attention to what's going on in Israel, don't you? More than the, the sports. More than the movies. Look at that. Look what they say. Why hast thou smitten us? You're worshiping the queen of heaven. You have got altars on every single street. You have got gods as many as the cities of Judah. And I mentioned what? 400, 500? 300 to 400 cities in Judah. You got more than 300, 400 gods. You are supposed to be the children of God, and you don't know why God is chasing you? When Isaiah's been unseen, Jeremiah's on the scene, you don't know? And this is the same awareness that the church has no awareness today. I'm rich, we're great, we're wonderful, and they have no idea they're wretched, miserable, poor, and naked, and blind. Walk up to primary any Baptist church and put Ichabob, and they're gonna stare at that song, that, that sign like a. What's that mean? What's it Ichabob? Isn't that the guy from from, from the Christmas story? No, 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 no. That was. Is, isn't that the guy with with the no head on the horseman? So no, no, that was. And there is no healing for us. Now, the world today, oh, Pfizer's and oh, Johnson and Johnson, oh, they're taking care of us. <laughs> Those shots are only less than a year old. I mean, it is Pfizer saying, hey, we got a great heart medication pill for you. Oh, we didn't know about that side effect. <laughs> You got a problem with your marriage? We can give you a heart pill. You know, most patients who have heart, who've had a heart attack, you don't do that for a long time. Marriage bed. Oh, Johnson & Johnson. Wasn't that the company that knew that their powder was causing cervical cancer? And they didn't want to tell anybody until it, it finally... Isn't, isn't that the same? Am I right or am I wrong? Well, you know, the, 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 the American government said they approved of these drugs. You mean the American government that approved all these drugs uh, that are now banned? <laughs> Warnings? You know, doctors used to prescribe and used to say, smoke a cigarette. It's good for you. you know, listen, I was in a lung doctor's office, and it's funny because he had advertisements, actual advertisements on his walls, in magazines and newspapers, that doctors say, go ahead and light up. Get this brand of tobacco. It's good for you. Just because man says, does it make it so? I mean, people today, well, I can get marijuana. I can get marijuana. It chills to be uh, outlawed. Well, it's legal. Yeah, legal doesn't make it right. We look for peace. Everybody's looking for peace. And there is no good. For the time of healing. And behold, trouble. Listen, let me tell you something about what's going on in 2021. At 2020, 2021... And 
for the next seven years after the church is gone. It's going to get worse, and it's going to get even worser. I don't know if worser is a word, but if, if Webster can make up words, I can make up words. Worser. It's a lot better for me to say worser than in the Greek. It's going to get worse. And don't trust the media and don't trust the government. They're trying to tell you right now, unemployment is at great, good levels and stuff like that. They're lying to you. I have to say that. For the time of healing, behold trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness. You mean like the book of Judges? You read the book of Judges? <laughs> yeah, they repented. Yeah, they got right for a while. That's the revivals in the Laodicean church. Oh, we got a revival. We're doing great. Oh, Lord, we're going to, oh, great God. Hallelujah. Oh, great preaching. Yeah, all right. This is a great week. Hey, all right. Glory to God. Next Sunday morning. Where were you on fire? Weren't you going to? Mm. Tired. You gonna go into the missionary field? You said you're gonna go. Well, no, I thought about it. I don't even. I don't go to revivals no more because I know what's gonna happen. After a week, is gonna. I mean, they the revivals is pump up your flesh, make you make your heart do a dance, make your ears tingle, make your brain flop, and then a week later, eh. I went to one revival, the guy's face turned as red as a lobster in a pot being cooked. Spitting and salvadating over the place. He, he didn't say nothing. The iniquity of our fathers. We, for we have sinned against thee. Are you confessing your sin because of the troubles? Or are you confessing your sins because you know you've sinned against God? Saul, King Saul. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. David. Oh, Lord God. I can't believe I've done it. Lord, I have sinned against you. Lord, whatever you do to me, but please take not thy spirit, thy Holy Spirit. You see, not only did David have tears from his face, but the Bible says he had a heart that was contrite and broken. And that Paul tells us to the Corinthian church, you can have a repentance as, oh God, I'm sorry. I'm really, really, Lord. And Lord, I know I battle this sin every day or once a week. Or what, but Lord, I, I, Lord, I admit to you, you know what? I enjoy that sin sometimes, but they're just, I don't want to do it. I'm tired of doing it. I'm tired of sinning, God. And there's that person there in the courtroom. Well, Your Honor, I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'm, I'll never do it again, Your Honor. I'm so sorry. Oh, God. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I didn't mean. I, I'll do it. All right. Pay $200 at the window and let you go. <laughs> I pulled that judge. I cried at the times like that. Oh, oh, arrested for DUI. I'm going to go out and have another drink. You know, I saw an ad for, for a... For a a lawyer that defended DUI cases. You know what that ad was? I'll take care of your your DUI, your tickets and everything, in time for the next happy hour. What on earth? See, there's legitimate repentance. And there's the repentance I got caught. I'll give you another example. You're crying out to God. You are sorry. And then let me give you a child who's in trouble with her dad. And I'm on the way to the bedroom for the chastisement time. She's already crying. 
I didn't do nothing yet. And the Bible says, be forewarned of the tears. <laughs> Chasing them. Don't worry about the crocodile tears. You know what Israel wants right now? You want you know what Judah wants right now? They want to get out of trouble. You know what the liberty of the Baptists want today? They want liberty to have their guns. They want to have liberty to do whatever they do. They want to have liberty to spend their money when they want to. They want to have more money instead of tax money. They want to have liberty for self, but they don't want liberty to serve God and do anything for God. I had to say that too. Do not abhor us. Do not hate us. God doesn't hate them. If they repent truly and get right. For thy name's sake. And be careful. Take not the name of the Lord's, na Lord's name in vain. Are you being serious? Or are you just beating around the bush? Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. <laughs> Why? You have. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Uh, just real quick, go back to chapter 11 and go back to chapter 12. We went through chapter 11, went through chapter 12. Go back and get the, the video. God said, you broke the covenant. God said, you broke the covenant. Now look at them blaming God. You know where else that happened? Adam, where are you? Oh, hi, God. I was naked. I was afraid to. Who told you you were naked? Has thou eaten of the tree I told you thou shalt not eat of? Well, God, you know it's your fault. You, you made that woman. Israel, Judah is doing the same thing. God, don't break the covenant. God didn't break it. Chapter 11, chapter 12. You broke it. You know what? You know what, Judah? They repented, right? Look, look at that. Look, look. Look what he said. We acknowledge our wickedness, our iniquity of our fathers. We have sinned against you. Well, what kind of repentance is that? It's your fault, God. God, you made us do it. God, it's your fault. God, you're the unholy one. And Americans and the world do that all the time. How on earth can they say we acknowledge our sins and then the next chapter, chapter 21, God, you broke it. God, you killed the baby. God, you caused the hurricane. God, you did this. God, you did that. What happened to your sins? So see, there was no true repentance. Where did David blame anybody for, for his affair and adultery and murder with Bathsheba and Uriah? He didn't blame nobody. David showed no blame. And there are among the vanities, emptiness, nothing of the Gentiles that can cause rain. It has been so terrible and so bad with no rain. Can we get a rain dancer from the Gentiles? Maybe they do their real rain dance. You know, it's funny in America... I, I, and people don't like me doing it, but we have taken the Native American, we have murdered the Native American, we have swindled the, the Native Americans, we have done ill against the Native Americans. And there have been times in American, American history, there has been no rain. And they run over to the Native Americans and say, can we have one of your rain dancers? Can we take you off the reservation that we stuck you on and stole your land? Can you give us one of your rain dancers? It is so bad they have 
Okay, we've sinned. Why do you hate us, God? Why did you break the covenant, God? And what can the Gentiles do for us? Oh, uh, the Gentiles have got you in the queen of heaven. The Gentiles have got you in altars. The Gentiles have got you in gods. Evidently, the gods of the Gentiles and the heathen have not done anything for you. The end of Joshua and the book of Judges. Or can the heavens give showers? <laughs> oh, okay. I know what I know what the problem with Judah is. Lord, can you fill my cup with more water, please? Because it's empty. Oh, I, I, we just need some water to fill my cup. You know, we're thirsty. Isn't that the plea to the rich man that was in hell? Oh, if I can only have a little drop of water. You know that rich man in hell never repented and never said he was sorry? In hell? They got water in their mind. Are not thou he, O Lord our God? Wow. Not only do they blame God. Come on, God. Aren't you our God? <laughs> well, from what Isaiah told us and what Jeremiah told us, no. <laughs> the queen of heaven's your God. Baal is your God. Baal's is your God. The sun, the moon, and the stars are your God. The trees are your God. The high places are your gods. Your pastor is your God. Your church is your God. Your favorite hymn singer is your God. That baseball team is your God. That race car driver is your God. That vacation spot is your God. Your boat is your God. Your Therefore we will wait upon thee. need to do more than wait, wait, wait. You need to repent. You need to get right. You need to get rid of those gods. You need to get your heart right. Exactly what Isaiah and exactly what Jeremiah has been preaching on. You're not going to wait on the Lord. No, you're not. Because pretty soon you're going to put Jeremiah in jail. And if he's not in jail already. For thou hast made all these things. There they go, blaming God again. Yes, God caused the war. God caused the famine. God caused the dirt. For all the sins of Israel. It is the sin of Judah that all this has happened. And they're saying, it's all God's fault. That's not repenting. That's called blaming. And blaming is not cleansing. 